Okay, following up with baseline best practice number three. Use bonded channels, 40 and 80 megahertz channels, when needed, but only in the five gigahertz band. So this is the baseline best practice. The use of bonded channels came to us uh, 2009 when 802.11n was released. They allowed us to take two standard 20 megahertz wide channels and we could configure both of them to operate in tandem and that would allow us to put twice as much data over the existing uh, channel set. The problem is you don't always need that and when you do use it you have reduced the number of unique channels by half. So it may be better in many cases not to use 40 or even 80 megahertz channels, the ones that came to us with 802.11ac in 2013. So let's take a look at that. So here's how you tell. So use bonded channels 40 and 80 when needed but only in 5 gigahertz. So we'll take a look here and we see that uh, there's three columns that are affected by this, the channel column, the width column, and the band column. So we see channel numbers, these denote the primary channel only, not the secondary channel. And then it shows us the channel width. It says that these are 80 megahertz channels. These are 40 megahertz wide channels, so more 80s, and then standard 20s down here. We see that the five gigahertz band is the one where we're using correctly the bonded channels. So the advantage to bonded channels is when you have a lot of data to, to transact, then we can use multiple uh, wider frequencies, wider bandwidth to get the transactions over with more quickly. So in order to dig a little deeper, let's look down in the spectrum screen again and we'll look at marker number two. And with marker number two, this is pointing to the highest end of the five gigahertz, that's the uni three area. And we can see that in this case, we've got Following the spectrum uh, outline here, we see that we've got some 80 megahertz wide channels. So 80 megahertz is one, two, three, four non-overlapping 20 megahertz wide channels bonded together. Okay? So we've got several of them stacked on top of each other, and that's okay. They can work, uh, they can coexist pretty well. Now we see marker number three. This is uh, at the top end of the Uni2 extended range, and we see here we've got some 40 megahertz wide channels. We can tell because there are two non-overlapping 20 megahertz wide channels being bonded together. If we look a little further over here at, my, at marker number four, now we've got a combination. So here in Uni1 and up into Uni2, We've got a combination of 80s, 40, and that's all. So I don't see any 20 megahertz wide channels here. When you see this combination here, this in some cases can cause some issues. So there's a couple of things to know about this. First of all, up here in channel 149 and higher, if you're using Apple TV, uh, Apple TV automatically, depending on what the vintage, if you're using Apple TV generation 4, it automatically creates 80 megahertz wide channels here from 149 to 161 and uses that for peer-to-peer -peer communications. So that's communications outside of your Wi-Fi, but it is using Wi-Fi channels. That's usually not a problem, but if you are using Apple TV, and you do have 80 megahertz wide channels or any other channels configured up here in Uni 3, you may want to look at the channel utilization feature here in Wi-Fi Explorer, and we want to make sure that that channel utilization is below 40%, and the further below the better. If it comes up around 40%, then you need to start thinking about moving your high, pr your high priority production SSIDs over out of that Uni 3 area and you can do that manually, okay? Down here, we see 80 megahertz on top of a 40 megahertz wide channel. We see 80 megahertz here and a 40 megahertz wide here, and that may be okay, but just know that there were different contention rules with 802.11n that came out with in 2009, limited to 40 megahertz wide channels than there were in 2013 with 802.11ac 80 megahertz wide channels. 
the 80 megahertz wide channel contention mechanism works better than the 802.11n contention mechanism. So it's possible to use 40 megahertz wide channels in 802.11ac, but if 802.11n and ac are mixed together, that's an area where you wanna take a look at the performance and you can do a throughput test on that area. You can also look at the number of retries on those channels and see if they're above, even above 10 to 15% would indicate that there's a lot of collisions in that area. And you might wanna do a little digger, a little deeper dig on, on configuring those channels. Now, one other thing to note from this screen, as we're looking down the width column, we come to a 40 megahertz wide column uh, channel here, and we notice it's on 2.4 gigahertz. Let me zoom in on that. So we've got 40 megahertz, it's on 2.4 gigahertz, it's using channel 10, uh, channel 10 would be the primary channel in this case, and I'm gonna say that's a no-no. The reason why is because there's just not enough bandwidth in 2.4 gigahertz to allow 40 megahertz of it to be associated to one SSID. And if you look down in the spectrum screen over here, you'll see at, at marker number six, this is what occurs with a 40 megahertz wide channel in, in 2.4 gigahertz. So there's only non-overlapping channels. There are um, only three. Yeah, I know they're numbered one through 11, but those channel or indicators are just five megahertz wide names. And we really need four, between four and five of those to, to be one free and clear channel. So when you use a 40 megahertz wide channel in 2.4 gigahertz, you occupy two thirds of the entire band just for that one radio. And that doesn't leave much for anybody else over here. So it is a, even though it's technically allowed, it's a bad practice to use 40 megahertz wide channels in 2.4 gigahertz. And that's based on the performance uh, problems that are caused both to yourself and to your neighbors around you, okay? So again, if you are going to use bonded channels, have a reason for doing that. Just don't turn them on because they're available. And then use them only in five gigahertz band and then re remember these other little cautions that I gave you about Apple TV and things like that and the difference between N and AC. So with that, baseline best practice number three, we've looked at uh, this with Wi-Fi Explorer and we've determined that this is a failure as well. The reason why is because we have a 40 megahertz primary on channel 10, which is 2.4 gigahertz. So this by itself, just because you're using 40 and 80 megahertz wide channels, in my opinion, would not fail your compliance on this one. That's okay as long as you have a reason for doing it and that's what you want and you've thought about it. But by allowing 40 megahertz wide channel 2.4 gigahertz, that's going to be outside the scope of these baseline best practices. If you're using 80 megahertz wide channels, and they're spanning Uni3. You can read these uh, red letter notes that I've included in here and um, continue on down. But the reason we failed this is because of the 40 megahertz.